All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nick Andershack, and I am the Public Information Coordinator for South Point Constructors. Uh, we are the contractor building the Southeast Connector Project for TxDOT. With me today in the gallery uh, is Ryan O'Neill, who is the Maintenance and Traffic Manager for the South Point team, uh, as well as Prapti Sharma, who is the Project Manager for TxDOT. Today we're going to look at a quick project overview. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the outreach that we've been doing for the community that we're working in. Uh, and then I'll cover requested lane closures that are currently within the MNC process, as well as some upcoming longer duration lane closures. Uh, and as always, I'll leave everybody with our public information services and how to get a hold of us. All right, so anybody who's unfamiliar with the Southeast Connector Project, uh, it is a $2.1 billion job, um, and it encompasses about 14 miles of alignment, uh, as well as three, Jeffrey, do you mind if I use a laser pointer? Um, three separate interchanges here. Uh, currently, our project spans up on the north side on 820 from Brentwood Stair Road, uh, just south of I-30, all the way down to Interstate 20. On Interstate 20, we go from Forest Hill Drive in the city of Forest Hill, uh, east to Little Road in Arlington, and then on US 287 from Village Creek Road all the way down to Sublet Road. There is the opportunity for two deferment packages uh, if funding becomes available. Uh, if that were to be added to the project, the first package, uh, package two, would add on to US 287 from Village Creek Road up north to Berry Street. Uh, and the second one, or excuse me, the third one would be Little Road east to Park Springs Boulevard in Arlington. One of the main features of this project is the design and reconstruction of those three interchanges that I was pointing out. Uh, if you've ever driven in the area, you know that right now it's kind of a mess. They're all left exits, and then you merge on the left side of highway traffic. Uh, we're going to do away with that. So what we're looking at here uh, is the 2287 interchange. I'm showing this one because it very clearly shows these collector distributors that we're going to be constructing. The yellow line will be the... Uh, northbound US 287 movement, uh, which you'll see here, separates itself from I-20 in this collector distributor. Um, so 287 no longer has to merge with 20, just to merge with 820, uh, and then continue northbound. Um, moving on to the blue line would be, say, you are heading northbound on 287, uh, but you would like to get on to 20 and merge with 20. Uh, so there is an option there. So if you follow that around, you'll exit on the right side here. Uh, and you'll rejoin in on the right side with this 20 traffic. Uh, and then, of course, the westbound 20 joining in that collector distributor lane to um, 287-820. So this is really going to improve that connectivity uh, and all that crazy merging that happens. We're doing this at all three of our interchanges, the 20-287, 820-287, and 20-820. Uh, here are some renderings of the interchange that's in Fort Worth. So this is uh, 287 and 820. I know that the renderings can be a little weird to look at, but north uh, is towards the bottom left here. Um, so this one highlighted in orange would be the southbound 287 movement if you're coming from downtown uh, and you want to join in with like the northbound 820. Right now you have to dive off to the left and then join in over here, uh, but it's going to be that, that new right out, right in movement. Uh, this is the northbound 820 to northbound 287 movement. Um, and then that collector distributor I mentioned earlier is also going to be a portion of this. So when you join that collector distributor with 20, uh, you'd be moving on to 820, but you'll still stay in those, uh, those lanes that you're in on the right side. And you'll come in off the right and rejoin in there. There is one more thing I want to point out here, not to get overshadowed by these beautiful new interchanges. Um, but this frontage road connecting Willowbarger Street to Cary Street mm -hmm. uh, did not exist prior to this project. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to really add to that connectivity for all these local businesses and local traffic. Right now, everybody needs to merge onto the highway just to hop right back off once they get to the other side of the interchange. Um, so we've actually already paved this, and we're looking to open it early next year. Uh, but this is a very big feature with our project. Here are what some of the project aesthetics will look like. Uh, these uh, encompass all the bridges, all the sound walls that we will have with this project. Uh, so on the left side here, we're looking at the Village Creek Road Bridge. 
which was our first new bridge built as part wow. of the project. Uh, you can see that red and beige color. Uh, we're going to use that with every bridge, every interchange on the project, uh, as well as that Texas State outline used on our bridge okay. column caps. That is so neat. And that's going to be at Village Creek? Yes, this is out there right now. This is a real picture, not a rendering okay. of the brand new Village Creek Road Bridge. I need to get back in the area. I've avoided it since y'all got there. <laughs> yes, you should come check it out. It, it is a lovely bridge. Wow. Uh, on the right side here, we're looking at a rendering of proposed noise barriers. Okay. Um, there are several of them throughout the project. Um, with the process that we go through, once they get designed, we then go to all of the adjacent properties to the proposed wall, and we let them uh, get together, learn about them, and vote on with whether or not we'll build them or not. Um, we have finished with the process for all of these. So when the ones that will get built uh, will look like this down here. It'll have that painted stone pattern finish on the traffic side, and it'll be a smooth uh, concrete finish on the back side. The height of these walls will depend uh, on the elevation of the roadway or where these properties lie. Uh, they can range anywhere from 8 feet to 16 feet, uh, but they're going to give any affected residents a 5 to 7 decibel reduction uh, for future traffic in, noise. I'll keep in close contact with you because what has happened between Ramey and Wilbarger, it, well, between Ramey and Barry, is the removal of several trees that provided that natural sound buffer, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so I'll be checking with you to see if that area will get sound barriers because it's going to be very, very different with those trees gone. Understood. So here is our project timeline. Um, this is a design-build contract model. So you can see that the construction portion overlapped with design portion. Uh, this contract model allows the contractor to get involved early. Uh, we start with design uh, early on, and then once certain portions and packages of design is completed, we can start building it while other portions are still being designed. Uh, so right now, towards the tail end of 24, uh, we are just about wrapped up with design. There's a few minor packages left uh, that we're putting the finishing touches on, uh, but we are in that bulk of construction. Um, so right now, mid-24 till about early 27 is going to be the heaviest portion of construction. Uh, but I think it's important to note that when we build stuff, we're not going to leave it closed until our completion in 28. Uh, like we were looking at with the Village Creek Road Bridge, as soon as things are completed, we will open them up to traffic. Uh, so as we get further along in our schedule here, uh, more and more things will open. The work will just move to different locations. Uh, right now, we have our substantial completion in February of 28. Uh, and substantial completion is when the roadway is available to use as its intended purposes. Uh, that final acceptance is really just like the finishing details, uh, but that February of 28 date is when we can start celebrating this project wrapping up. So what are we doing for outreach with all these many businesses and residents? We do have a quarterly business owner task force meeting. Uh, our, our most recent one was middle of September. Uh, it had a pretty good turnout. We go over all the work that we've completed since our previous meeting uh, and what they can expect upcoming until the next one. Uh, once we finish our presentation, I'll stay on. We do these virtual, so uh, any businesses or residents with questions uh, can then voice them to me, and I can open up our design files. We can go zoom in uh, on an exact property uh, and answer whatever questions they may have. Uh, we also reach out to homeowner and neighborhood associations as needed. Um, for example, the Hanley Meadowbrook mm -hmm. Neighborhood Association uh, we are very involved with. Uh, we started doing recent presentations whenever there is a change happening within that neighborhood. Uh, so, for example, we're going to reach out here uh, next month getting ready for some upcoming closures. We'll also present to local businesses and organizations by request. Uh, typically, those don't come in too often because we do a lot of door-to-door -door outreach where uh, if there's going to be an impact, we'll go out and meet with them. Uh, so there's rarely a need for them to request us to come in and present directly to them. However, if they would like us to do that, we are more than happy to do so. Uh, some of our other public information efforts, this first bullet here uh, is access impact agreements that we'll make with each individual property. Um, and these aren't an agreement that encompasses the entire project. This is for each individual operation. Uh, so say we're going with our underground drainage pipe and we need to cross somebody's driveway. We'll meet with them well in advance. We'll talk through what the work is, uh, how we're going to do it, and how we're going to maintain access to their property. 
uh, we'll do the work, and then when the next phase of work reaches their property again, I'll meet with them a second time, a third time, however many times it takes to finish uh, all the project local to them. Uh, we also advertise our lane closures and detours on social media. Uh, so we've got our X account, Facebook. Uh, we have a weekly email newsletter that goes out every Friday. And most recently, these SMS text alerts. Uh, we've reserved those for, for larger full highway closures uh, or if there's some sort of an incident on the highway that requires us to detour traffic. Um, so these next ones that I want to talk about are three lane closures that we have requested with the city that are currently within the MNC process. Uh, I just wanted to go over why we would need to close these. Uh, so the first one here is Craig Street, and this is east and west of Interstate 820. Uh, and there is just a whole mess of utility lines that are lo located uh, on the city streets. Um, so what our request would be would be come in, uh, and over the course of two months, we would relocate and finish up all of that utility work. Uh, there's a few other locations where this is present. Uh, this is Eastland Street, also in Fort Worth, east and west of 820. Uh, there's a water line and a telecommunications line underneath the roadway. Uh, this one would take us approximately one month to complete. Uh, and then Truman Drive, there's a pretty large water line uh, on the west side of the highway, which would also take us about a month to complete. Um, now on this next slide, I have included a brief video. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get it to work. If not, I'll describe it to you. Uh, but it's showing uh, the work that we do prior to coming in and closing these roads. So we won't close it for two months and mess around and not really work in it. We'll do all the work we can right up until we have to close it. We'll close the road. Uh, and then we'll get out of there as quick as we can and reopen it to commuters. I, I hope you show the pickup trucks going through the middle of whatever the dividing lane is. It's fascinating to see that. It's a truck goes through the highway. I think this video is very cool. Okay. If, if we can get it to work. Very cool. Wow. All right. So this is uh, just some drone footage of, for example, the Craig Street closure that we looked at first uh, with all those utility lines in there. Uh, we've been working for the last several months to get all our bores under the highway and get all of it ready to go so when we close it, we can work as quick as we can and get out of there. Um, so what we're looking at here is a bore rig uh, going underneath 820 from the west side to the east side uh, along Craig Street, which we're looking at there. Uh, we had to use several rigs, so this is a second one uh, for different sizes or uh, we put different drills on them to make it through different portions of the soil or rock. Uh, this is all of our work that we were doing just off the roadway. Uh, no impacts to traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, again, getting this ready so that we can do the fi finishing touches underneath Craig Street. So this is the telecommunications line. Um, and one of our utilities engineers has told me that this is one of the largest in AT&T history. Uh, and we were able to push this underneath the highway here uh, using multiple pieces of equipment. Wow. A whole heck of a lot. I love utility work. So this is on the uh, west side of 820. That's Craig Street that we're looking at there. Mm -hmm. um, and once all this gets in, now we just have to do those tie-ins that are underneath Craig Street. All right. So uh, these next couple slides are... Uh, upcoming closures that are a little bit in the future still, but I want to get on everybody's radar because they're larger ones. First of which being the Craig Street Bridge. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about Craig Street east and west of the highway doing the utility work, uh, but then we have to come in and rebuild that bridge. So right now we're looking at quarter one of 25, be closed for about a year, and then in the end of 25 we'll reopen it. Um, I thought the bridge was coming down. It will be. Within this year time frame, yeah. we'll take down the old bridge and build up the new one. Okay. Um, so when this date range ends, there'll be that brand new Craig Street. Uh, this isn't the best rendering. I do have another picture on the next slide, but you can see in the distance here, uh, this is existing Craig in Lancaster, and yeah. this is the new one here. Uh, when it's closed, the westbound Craig Street traffic would go up to um, Meadowbrook, mm -hmm. and the eastbound traffic would go to Lancaster. Uh, and here is kind of a top-down rendering of what Craig and Lancaster will look like eventually. Wow. 
Next up would be Meadowbrook. So once we're able to open up the new Craig, then we will do the same with uh, Meadowbrook. This one will also take us about a year to construct. Uh, westbound Meadowbrook traffic to Brentwood Stair, just to the north, uh, and eastbound down to the new Craig Street Bridge. I do wanna take a moment to look at this rendering on the right here to show uh, some of the improvements that we're throwing on all of these new bridges that we're constructing. Um, my favorite are these Texas turnarounds here, the free-flowing U-turns. They get you turned around north or south without having to sit through traffic lights or stop signs, uh, as well as uh, pedestrian and ADA crossings, as well as over top of the bridge. We're going to do this uh, at just about every city street cross street on the project. Uh, and then finally is the Sun Valley Drive Bridge. Oh, uh, our office is located right here. Uh, so we're pretty invested with getting this one done as quickly as possible. Uh, we're looking at later 25 to later 26 for this one. Uh, westbound Sun Valley traffic would go up to Martin Street, and the eastbound traffic would go down to Business 287. Uh, if you've driven in the area, you know that Business 287 has multiple lights to get turned around. So you might be thinking, detour to Business 287, that's going to be 45 minutes. But by the time we get to this portion of work, uh, we're going to be reconfiguring the lights with temp signals, um, and Ryan, I believe that there is a free-flowing U-turn. He's nodding his head yes. We will be installing uh, one of those U-turns at Business 287, uh, so you won't even have to sit through those lights. Wow. And then I will leave it on our public information slide and open it up to questions. Uh, there are a few things that I'd like to call out quick. Uh, our project website, southeastconnector.com, is currently undergoing maintenance. Uh, I expect it to be back up to Internet traffic by early next week. Uh, and then left off of this slide... But important to note is that we would encourage everybody to use the Waze traffic app. Uh, we have a direct line of communication with the Waze designers. Uh, so every single day I'll reach out to them. They have our full list of lane closures, all the detours that they need. Uh, so Waze always has that most up-to-date routing as well as traffic alignments.